Well, hello everybody. Today's Monday, March 14th. And here we are. Another Monday. Another Kalazar show. But not Forrest Fenn. So anybody that gets in or wants to watch this is not going to be about Forrest Fenn. So I'm just giving you a heads up ahead of time. You can leave now if you want to. K-Pro might be on. She might not. We'll see if she shows up or not. And uh, today we're going to go over the Grand Adventure videos. And tell me you guys can hear me. I know we we were having some problems on the last show with audio. So, I'll give it a couple minutes for everybody to get in here. Today is Thursday. That's right, AJ. That was a test. That was just like one of the Grand Adventure puzzles. That was a test just to see if you were paying attention. Okay, today's Thursday, March 14th. Guess what today is? Today's Pi Day. You guys know what that is? No, not Humble Pie, not Apple Pie. Today's Pi Day, 3.14. The mathematical formula? Mathematical irrational number? Happy Pi Day, everybody. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go because I promised I would give the answers to the Grand Adventure videos from last year. Not too many people played last year. But it's weird. We actually had more people play last year than this, this year. It's just different people. So that's interesting. We had 67 people take part in the Grand Adventure last year. Now, if I remember right, this is like February of last year is when I did these puzzles. I charged the big $5 uh, for, to get access to the videos. And I gave away seven treasure hunting books. That's how it happened last year. And uh, kind of did it as a test just to see if, uh, you know, I could see how this thing would work. It was kind of fun. Uh, so what we're going to do is go through some of those videos that I've released publicly on the YouTube channel. Uh, ouch. Hey, how you doing? And there's K-Pro. Can you hear me? Uh-oh, we can't hear you. It might be on mute. It could be muted. Wait, I heard that. I heard, like, static when you moved it. Just make sure the volume's up on your computer, maybe. New headset, she says. Well, that's how things happen. Oh, there it goes. I was going to say, but I disappeared. Ah, so we got to do it that way. Okay. That's fine. So K-Pro is here, everybody. She wants to know the videos, too, even though she's in, in, ineligible to play this current one. But you never know. Maybe one in the future. I don't know. It's still We still can't hear you. Wait. Let me make sure. Mute. Unmute. Um... I wonder if it's, eh, it shouldn't matter. So I'm getting an input level. In other words, like if you hit, top, hit the mic like this, Christy, tap it. No, that's not doing it. Okay, wherever it's plugged into your computer, unplug it, plug it back in. Because I hear like a static. Yeah, right there. See? Okay, talk. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. There we go. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, a little loose connection, that's all. Uh, and the Wiz <laughs> says, don't fix the audio. Thank you, Steve. You're super sweet. <laughs> so we're good. Audio levels are good for me and K-Pro. I hope so. Yeah. Oh, I, now I get it. Don't fix the audio. Nice, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now I got it. Mike, you were right. thinking it. You know you were. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, no, actually. <laughs> anyway, um, happy Pi Day, Christy. Happy Pi Day. You know it's what that is? 3.14. Yeah, well, 3.14. No, it's for one, math one, nerds. It's a math thing. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Grand Adventure Puzzles. You ready? Because you have to give the answers. Sure. The answer is 3.14. <laughs> hey, there you go. That's kind of cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, but I did make it clear that this is not going to be about Forrest Fenn. Other than maybe a Forrest Fenn coin or two on eBay, but we'll talk about that, that at the end. But we're going to go through the Grand Adventure videos from last year. Then I'm going to give an update on this ongoing, current Grand Adventure, the coins. And then I'm also going to give two hints. Not one, but two hints. Maybe I should give three in honor of Pi Day, but we're going to give two um, for two of the videos that are currently going on. Uh, okay. i got to get a and light, huh? Give, this seems dark for some reason. Yeah. You're going to give how many people have solved it and earned? Yeah, super? exactly, exactly. Because there are some people that have reached level two. So I yeah. will tell people how many. I will and tell. And I would love to know are a majority of those women. I'd like to know that. 
Oh, is that right? Yeah, actually, they yeah. are, actually. Yeah, sounds like you might already know. <laughs> I do. All right. Say hi to everybody. I'm going to turn this other light on, see if it's brighter. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody in the chat. And Mike says that we might not be talking about Force Men. He doesn't know. He's only the boss like 90% of the time. I'm still going to rut rut. Okay. Here's Cock for Dan. Okay. Thank goodness. We have a moderator in the room. Um, okay. Uh-oh. My RCA jack is messed up. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you fine. Can everybody else hear you? Can everybody else hear me? I believe Houston, so. We have a problem. It says Houston, we have a problem. Well, that could have been back before you, uh, okay. you know, plugged it in. Okay, and I, you know what? I'm. That won't matter to just chat. Keep telling me if you can hear me, not hear me, whatever. There's like a mute thing here. I don't know how to work it. It's a <laughs> Call of Duty for you gamer people. So, but it was the most expensive one they had. So I'm like, okay, hook me up. And they're like, okay. So there was apparently an, <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So I don't know. Tell me if there's an issue and if there is, I'll try to fix it. If not, I don't know. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay. If it mean... freezes, some issue we have is that people, sometimes the video freezes. You got to refresh your browser because we're still live on our end and everything's still going. Audio's Okay. But if you're on your phone, you may need to close it, open it again. If you're on your computer, you need to refresh. It happened to me once, actually, from actually streaming it from here. I had to actually reboot it. Or not reboot it, refresh it as well. So. Okay. Okay, sorry to mess everything up. Yeah, <laughs> Mike usually gives me some warning, and he didn't give me as much. And so... It was like, um, we're going I'm live. Let's go. And but, I'm like, ah! So. JBR Princess, how you doing? Um, yeah. So Monday... If Copper Dan, you said you set this up. So Monday night show, we're going to have Copper Dan on with, I hope, Jana, who found Jana. Is it Jana or Jana? That's going to be the first question I asked. Is Jana? Oh, okay. So nice. I hope they're for them to both be on and give the solution for the latest silver coin, numbered coin that was found in Minnesota. So uh, we'll be able to talk about that uh, on Monday. And maybe we'll give an idea when the next one's going to be released. We'll see. I don't know yet. Maybe. That's why it's maybe. I don't know yet. That's why it's maybe. All right. So, you got anything you want to go over before we start these videos, K Pro? No, these will be exciting videos. I have some other stuff maybe later, but. I don't think you've even seen the videos from last year. Have you even watched them? <laughs> I didn't know you might. Yeah, me and K Pro didn't even know each other last year. We're going back to February, March of last year. I mean, I knew you because you were the famous Calazars, but like uh -huh. I didn't, I did not participate <laughs> in the Grand Adventure. And then when I finally knew about them, I was ineligible because we had like. You know what? Let me do it this way. Yeah, I got, you, together, I got you. So. Yeah. Let me mute this. Let me go here. I'm See, Copper Dan says them. he'll be there. You betcha. All right. I didn't work. get it. You betcha. I'll I'll oh, work on let my. Let me go. Aspect. Let me go to the Grand Adventure playlist. Huh? That may make sense. That make an easy way to figure that it makes out. Makes sense. Um, okay. Oh, I see. So there we go. There we go. There we go. I'm trying to think of one of the easier ones. Yeah, I guess this is one. All right. So let's skip the ad and let's, uh, let's just watch it and then we'll go over the solution. So try to figure out okay. the password and send it to Cal Leagers because we already know it. And so when you're done with that part, this is a puzzle from the wall. If you <laughs> could find it, uh, if you could do it, then send it to Cal Leaders. All right. Here it is. So I called this the map. Puzzle. You zoomed in here and show all the map e, for everybody. C. E, hey, you can't say the letter. I think it's the alphabet. <laughs> I don't think so. Are you trying to make it the alphabet? I'm trying to find my Something notes like so that. I can they find the solution. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, Give me a minute, guys. See there. That's oh, right. Yeah, so it kind of is the alphabet, except for the F. Kind of? Why okay, do you F say except for the F? No, I mean, uh, except for the I, because never mind. A, <laughs> I. Are they all there? All the letters? Most of them. <laughs> so it's A, B. Okay, so this is the premise on this map, and I had two little helpers here helping me out. But if you'll notice, basically there were letters on certain states, okay? So what you had to do were take those state names in the order of the, le the letter tile that's on them. So uh, A, let me see. Uh, 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 make sure I got it right. So, Oops. So, 
send it to Cal Lasers. Well, maybe I do have the wrong one. Let's see. Because no, because then the boys thought the boys thought they had the answer, but they really didn't. So what I'm telling them not to say isn't right anyway. I just thought it'd be funny. No, because I because what if um they already know. All right. Oh, I got you. I am the wrong puzzle. I won't put that in. That's why you can edit it. I see what happens when you don't give us an I know. Is it? No, I don't know. We'll see. When somebody sends the answer, I'll show you. It's not alligator. It's not? No, because where's the L? An alligator. That's right. Good and that's job. what they thought, that it was alligator. What? Chris what? figured that out. I don't remember what he messed up, but <laughs> it was something. This is our map uh, on the wall over there. And so... It's a puzzle now, because maybe it's alligator. Don't <laughs> say the past. Can you figure out the past code? Send it to Kelly's if you can. Okay. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> he Dorky. whispered alligator once again. All right, let me pause it there. Oh, he said that. All right. So basically, because. you took the states, you put the states in the order of the letters. Some people said it was a little hard to make out, no, but then, you have to pause well, the video. That part. No, you got to do stuff, you know, like that. So F is Florida, C is Georgia, I is Tennessee, G is Illinois. Basically, when you list those states out, now I can't find my notes on this, but this should be right. When you list those states out, you simply took the letter um, not that it was on the tile, which would have been a cool idea, right? Like right here, F has a four on it, like the fourth letter in Florida. You took the position it was in the alphabet. So for the state that had the A on it, you take the first letter. The state that had the B on it, you take the second letter. Make sense, Capro? Yes, I'm totally following yeah, along. Yeah, yeah, you're not paying attention. Okay, and that was the answer. I mean, a lot of people overcomplicate these things, I think. And that's what we all do, much like, I think, the Forrest Fenn thing as well. Hawk but, comes razor, right? Yeah, it was that easy. Um... And people did solve this. There were winners, so it wasn't that hard. But that's all it was. Um, taking uh, the letters from each state. So kind of easy, right? Kind of, sort of. Turkit is asking, is this from two years ago? Uh, I No, I believe it was 2018. It was in the beginning in February of 2018 when I first came out with the idea. Well, actually, yeah, February 22, 2018 is when the video was uploaded. So, yes, it was February 2018. These were private videos. You could only get them if you joined the Grand Adventure by PayPaling me the big $5. And I actually lost money because I think... Five six, whole dollars? Like five whole dollars? Yeah, it was five bucks. Yeah, it was five okay. bucks. Because I knew I had to buy the treasure hunting videos. I had a list of seven different... Um, treasure hunting videos, treasure hunting books. I had a list of seven different books. Whoever came in first got to pick to take their pick, including all three of uh, Forrest Fenn books. And they weren't books I had. I was buying these books. So that's why I did the $5. Wait, you're actually giving justification of the five whopping dollars yeah. that you're Okay. Right. I was kidding. Okay. All right. Uh, no. All right. Okay. This one was fun. Check this one out. See if you can get this one, uh, K-Pro. This one was Okay, I'm going to follow along for real. This is actually from an escape room that I went through here in Vegas. Check it out. And there's the books that I gave away right there. Is there sound to it? Yeah, can you hear it? No, I can't. So I can't really follow it. No. But that's okay. But it's just music. You don't need to hear the sound. So four digit code, right? What's the four digit code? So if we go back now, the, the train, the shapes threw a lot of people off the books in the background had nothing to do with that. The only thing you used were the words that are in the center of the circle. So let's go back to the first one real quick. A circle of friends. Okay. And that's what the shapes, that's what the blocks and the shapes were as a hint to shapes, a circle, a pentagon, A tri triangulate the answer, a triangle, 
and the last one is squarely square. So all you had to do was take the, cha the, the shapes and give the number of sides of the shapes. But what's interesting is a lot of people said a circle has, how many sides does a circle have, Capro? Talk about uh, pi day. Zero, right? Exactly. But some people said a circle has one side, meaning if you have a physical circle like a shape, it does have a side. You can run your finger around it. Meaning because I had blocks, they were thinking of a 3D representation of a circle. There is a surface. I would not say there's a side, but yeah. I am not. I can ask my math department for to look into that. Right, right. So that was a big discussion going back and forth. Is, does a circle have a side or not? So I accepted zero or one. I accepted both answers. <laughs> my original thought was a circle does not have a side. It's, it's, it would be zero for zero sides. So the four-digit code is zero for the circle. A pentagon has how many sides? Pentagon five, right? Five, right. Triangle has three sides and a square has four sides. So the four digit code was zero, five, three, four. Easy, right? But it's not easy, easy when you don't know that because people are looking at these shapes. People are like, right. there's Forrest white fans, ones. Yeah. Forrest Fan's poem, when we see the answers, he'd be like, that was so easy. Why did it take us so long? You know, sometimes the simplest way is the easiest way. But that circle was interesting because a lot of people argued and said a circle has a side, like this ball, like this ball right here. They were saying that's a circle and that has one side because you can run your finger over it. You know what I mean? So I said, yes. okay, I'll give you that one. So the like answer, surface, surface like equals a surface. Side. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Just no angles on a circle, on a ball. So zero five three four or one five three four. We took uh, both answers. I took both answers. Okay. No, Steve Wayne. We're not talking about inside and outside because the circle would be the ball. So no inside. It's outside only. Just like all these. Um, yeah. Anyway, the puzzles aren't perfect. I'm not perfect. All right, check this one out. I don't know if, can you guys in the chat hear the music that plays through the video or no? Yeah, let's see if you guys hear this or not. Hey, who's that back there? So we have a dollar bill and we have words, right? Now a lot of people, this one's not that hard. Can you get a K-Pro just by looking at it or no? Mine's delayed. So mine says triangulate the answer. Is that what the... I sh I thought I shared the video with you. It's not shared on your Zoom screen. Now I have two different videos. I have triangulate the answer, and then I have you with the dollar bill. Yeah, you're supposed to be looking yeah. at that one. That's the, the real-time picture. So I'm yeah. just saying, so you're looking in a mirror. Can you tell what, how to read these words? Anybody mm -hmm. in the chat? What's the angle of the arc of a circle? Hmm. So, um, all right, it's reversed. In other words, when you put words in a mirror, they're reversed, right? Okay. So all you have to do is read these sentences backwards. So it says, what number is hidden uh -huh. on the dollar bill, dollar bill, and what does it represent? So in the description down in this video, there's a link to another YouTube video that, that gives the answer. So in other words, it's like the history of the dollar bill and why there's a certain number that's hidden on the dollar bill. Just that easy. So, yeah. so just to throw it out there for the uh -huh. people that are doing the crazy grand adventure 20 crossword puzzle craziness. Right. Um, do you think this was harder or simpler than, than last year? And for the people that have done both, which one do you think was harder so far? And Mike, what do you think? Um, they're different. So the first one was a logic puzzle, as the people know. You had to get all these answers from these videos and then – at the end was a logic puzzle and you had to figure out the answer to the logic puzzle, which I really liked because I liked pu logic puzzles. The current grand adventure is a crossword puzzle. So different kind of puzzle. So mm, I think maybe the first one was easier. The first grand adventure might've been easier. Okay. Yeah. Cause these really aren't that hard to my way of thinking, but of course none of none, nothing's hard once you know the solution, right? And then there's it's the bullet. Just that easy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Jake says, it's just that easy. <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's that one. Easy, right? All right. So, this one was, uh, oh, no, that's not it. Where is it? This one was a fun one, too. This one, everybody had a problem with this one. And one mistake that I'm making in these videos is I guess I'm putting videos in the beginning that I think are simple. But they're not. They're actually pretty hard. Like with the current Grand Adventure, Puzzle 1 should not have been Puzzle 1. The Braille puzzle should have been Puzzle 1 because that's a lot easier. 
the one that I put out was pretty hard, and I think it turned some people off. So they just like, I'm not going to play. I don't get it. I don't understand how this works. So I'll work on that for the next one. But this one drove a lot of people crazy. Here's Eric doing his dab at McDonald's. And you got some words right here in red. And this one was clever because what threw everybody off is if you take the first letter of each word, it's WWW, right? And But then it goes K-I-A-G, but then it falls off and it doesn't make sense because you don't take the first letter of every word. The trick was you had to take the first letter of the first word and the last letter of the second word all the way through. So W, 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 K, I, N. So there was a pattern. You had to use the first le first letter or last word or last letter of the first word and second word. And basically what it spelled out was uh, W, 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 K, I, N, G, which was kingjamesbibleonline.org. And you had to use that website. You had to use the Bible in a later puzzle. So this one, because everybody saw the WWW, they're like, I know it's a computer, it's a link, it's a website, but they couldn't figure the rest of the message. How they did it, you trickster! That's a red herring. Party foul, party foul. It's not a red herring. It's just uh, it throws you off a little. I don't know if you want to call it a red. You herring. throw her off her. You throw her off her. Okay. For first letter of the first word, last letter of the second word. So first, last, first, last, first, last, and then all the way through. So that was a fun one. People had a lot more trouble with that one than I thought they were going to. So here's one where me and the boys went on a little geocache. Out here looking for a geocache. Let's go. It's supposed to be up by this tree somewhere. Uh, and this was a real geocache. Yeah, I didn't like set this sand. up. It's okay. Did you accidentally give a. It's supposed a to be right up, up here right? somewhere. For real? Ha! <laughs> That's right. Yeah, <laughs> One of the, the puzzles was bra is Braille. There's an unexpected clue right there. Unexpe an oh, you're just like Forrest Fenn. There is now an unintended clue out there. Did you dip your toe in it? Was it warm? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my right. God. Oh, boy. So I'm out here with the boys. We're looking for Geocache. Yeah. And then we find Santa it, Claus. a big one. It's an entire bucket. We got our YouTube hit. play button. And on the side, it says Calazars. I can see this. Oh. Hang on. So we are going to put this in the bucket so people know to look for our YouTube channel. Okay, I'll sign this. So what do you guys are going to leave in there? You're leaving a car? Chris, what are you leaving, Eric? And I'm taking this. I'm taking You're going to take Santa Claus? Yeah. I'm going to take... A car? And what are you leaving? What are you going to put in there? That's our car. Yeah, that, that's what Chris just put in there, Eric. You can't take that one. Put the car back. And if there's nothing to take, that's okay. Then I am a travel bug. Take so it and we put were, it in a different oh. cat. We looked at the different things that were in the bucket. And then I was like, wait a minute. That's the what's car. This? Okay, you put. Yeah, look at our video. Huh? Our wait. Video. What, what's this? How it got in there, I don't know. Kalazar's Grand Adventure. What is that? Oh, you Chloe. literally didn't know. Was that in there? <laughs> no. I thought it was a clue. Wait. <laughs> Maybe somebody the already found had it. No idea. Here, open it up. What's it say? No. No way. Um, the other, uh, the YouTube uh, coin, we left in that other cache a couple of months ago. It is, Chris. So basically, it's Left a in that other cache a couple message. of months ago. And this was just a cipher. I'm trying to get it. Uh, uh, uh. When you decode that, I think it was just a simple shift cipher. You shift the letters over a certain number. But what it came out to be was, give me one second. And somebody just asked me a, a question about um, the new Grand Adventure. And I'll answer that question at the end of the video. So there's another clue that I'll be giving out for everybody. And then the people who aren't watching live, they'll be able to see it tonight. Because, again, I'm only going to respond to the answers by noon and tomorrow. So it's kind of fair, right? Uh, uh, so when you decode this. Oh, this was a keyboard shift. That's right. If you look at the if you look at those letters on your keyboard, you have to go to the key that's on the left hand side. That's how you decode this. So an N is really a M. I'm sorry, you go to the right. N is M. T is Y. And when you dec decode it, it says, "My fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country." Well, that's random. Why is that in there? Because I use that in a later puzzle. A lot of these puzzles are related, and I don't think people caught on to that in the beginning, but they are. I don't know. Would that be helpful in the current Grand Adventure? I don't know. Maybe. 
All right, so that's <laughs> all it was. That? Can I answer that? <laughs> well, you know the answer, so don't be people. Don't be asking K Pro for help. Either. Oh, you can totally if you super chat me. I'm totally up for bribes. <laughs> uh, no, we're not doing that because then that's not fair. <laughs> well, I can't give any hints. I guess maybe K Pro can. I don't know. All right, here we go. Next one, puzzle eight. More coins. Everybody loved the coin puzzle I put up. That was probably one of the easiest puzzles I put up in the current adventure were the coins that were on the table, right? So this one, look at this. We got all kinds of coins. What the heck is the answer here? Um, I amaze myself sometimes. All right, hang on. Okay, that's not it. All right, hang on. Uh, uh, the geocache... I just closed it down. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, apparently these are out of order than the way I uploaded them. Mm -mm -mm. Hang on, I'll find it. Oh, this was, so basically these are four digits, right? The four, uh, 15, you add them, you add the amounts together, seven, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have a set of four digits. Let me see if I got that right. Uh, uh, uh. What do you guys think the answer was? Anybody? Uh, uh, uh. You know, maybe the first one was harder because on the first one, I had a Craigslist ad. You had to get email this person on this Craigslist ad. Does anybody remember that? Did anybody do the first Grand Adventure? Uh, there was a Craigslist ad that once you got to it, you knew it was related. You knew exactly what it was. Doug, that was you? So, and that's, I thought it was pretty funny. So, Doug saying he's the one who put the uh, clues up for sale on eBay. Yes. But your name I'm is different like on Facebook. Is that really you? <laughs> Um, well, and I put, and Mike and I, I don't think we have settled our debate. Uh, we have had a long discussion <laughs> about should that be okay? And do we, how do you set it up if we don't think it's okay? And Mike and I are a little bit on different spectrums. And I think we've debated for a couple hours and then we just like, we're going to talk about this another night. So, right. It was um, funny and not against the rules because really I didn't put out any rules. So, you know, right. fair game is the way I looked at it. But K-Pro yeah, so was like, like, they can't do that. And I was like, well, well no, I said, do we not want them to do that in the future? In, right. In right, future right, hunts, right. does that turn enough people off within the, the hunt that they wouldn't want to do this? Because we're wanting to school this up to hundreds and then thousands, et cetera. And so part of it was because Mike did confirm the answers halfway in between. Do we want to do that in the future or not? So just don't generalize like that, Mike. And I don't even know if we want, maybe it's fair game. Hey, if people, just like the Forest Sand Hunt, that those coins came out and Mike made $15 off and now some people are making a lot more. Is that a good thing? Is that not a good thing? I mean, I, it's it sparked discussion, which is good. But Mike and I got, hey. I wouldn't say heated, but we got into some good, good <laughs> discussion, discussion, right? Discussion. Right. Good heated what discussion. The, there we go. All right. Okay. Yeah, this one, I think it was letter of the alphabet, but basically the four. You see, the, I'm getting confused with another puzzle that I had. Plus, this was over a year ago, so it was a while. I'm kind of looking at them for the first time with you guys. Um, hang on. Uh, did I, let me see, let me see some. As you're looking for that, would that yeah, $6 help, help get you to a $500 prize? It's actually a pretty interesting, like if you're stuck on one and one of those went up, but here's the other thing, just because somebody says, cause there were some people saying, oh, I've been confirmed that I have 15 clues solved. And I talked to Mike and Mike's like, nobody has 15 clues solved yet. And so that there's a little bit of faith that some people, they can misrepresent. And I don't even know what that means. On right. eBay. Does that matter or whatever? Well, so there was a good discussion. What we realized was anytime you have a treasure hunt where you're confirming certain aspects, because when people say, send me 10 words, I'll tell you, you have three correct. Well, now there's the ability for you to share those three with other people right. because you right. know you have three correct, right? Some people were saying that they were like, I got one, seven, and 19. What do you have? And I'll trade you. And they were trading. 
which I thought right. was interesting too. You guys are, you guys are create. you think outside the box, but when you're building puzzles, I will say it's a whole different skill set and different thought logic. Cause basically you're trying to make it so you can't do too much of that where you just game the system a little bit of gaming or being creative i think is okay but if you literally did not put any of the 20 solutions in and you just were able to buy a couple on ebay do a couple here do would that be fair or not and mike is a little bit more lenient than i am i mike was like <laughs> hey fair game and i was like yeah kind of let's let's come up with some rules if you will well is it cheating i mean i don't think sharing answers is cheating it's just sharing answers there can only be one winner <laughs> right unless you have a hunt that has multiple prizes like this one because okay. right now we have two winners already they could just share the solution with somebody if they wanted to i would hope they don't but you know technically they could right right but okay so i'm a teacher i think everybody on earth now knows that I have closed book tests where it's only you. I have open book tests. I have take home tests where I basically know that they're going to do anything. And I have group tests. So <laughs> I lay out what the ground rules are and I set it up in such a way, take home test. Obviously that's a lot more, this is almost like a take home test. And that's what we're talking about for a bigger hunt. We're thinking about doing next year. Do we do it where it, you have to be in a certain room and we can watch, or is it more just fair game and you can collaborate with anybody you want? This is, these are all good discussions, but right now we're talking about a couple hundred dollar coin uh, right. that you can put on eBay. If we're starting to talk about a couple thousand or tens of thousands, we got to work through all this. And that's the cool <laughs> part. That's exactly what these were about is to yeah. get those different scenarios out that we didn't even know would happen. Um, so that's yeah. the next. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's why these were free. Cause we wanted to, so just so people know there were about 40 people that have participated in, in the current videos so far, 40 different people have sent me answers there's been two winners so far. And just so you know, there are four people today that got to level two. Yesterday, there was nobody that got to level two. But today, when I went to reply to everybody, four people are on level two. There's only three more winners. So everybody, do what you can, I guess, to get those answers in. And then Rob just said, um, and I will put out this out because I have been getting uh, certain answers about level two. Uh, level two, the level, the answer to level two is not a number. That's all I'll say, okay? It's not a number. All right. And I just wanted to show this was this was the very first video that started the entire Grand Adventure idea. So what I did is I just made coffee like I do. And I showed all the treasure hunting books that I have. These are all treasure hunting books. Never talked about the Grand Adventure. Didn't tell anybody this was a puzzle. But check it out what happened at the end. I just wanted to see how many people would catch this. And that was it. So you had books and you had coffee and most people just turned the video off right here. It was titled, Do You Like Puzzles? It's got 1,500 views. But if anybody was paying attention, you see there's about another 30 seconds left of the video and this is what happened at the end. I was playing around with a little video editing software. So this is obviously Morse code. And basically what it said was, "Do you?" I believe it said, do you like puzzles? Email me at kalazars at gmail.com. And that's how I started the, the Grand Adventure last year. As I never publicly came out and said anything, the people who emailed me from this message right here, they had a head start. I just wanted to see how many people would catch it, decode it, and actually email me. And um, some did. I actually... Um, a different puzzle. No, Doug, everybody has the same puzzle for level two. It's not different. Just like the... Um, the videos, yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Just like the videos, the video puzzles are the same for everybody currently. So, um, and what I did is I posted that video on Reddit, and they actually banned me for some reason. I think because they thought I was like advertising or trying to sell something. <laughs> so they banned me from one like puzzle group or subreddit. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't been back since, so who knows if it was temporary or not. Um, that Reddit, I'm just getting into Reddit right now. There is a group with a personality of themselves. I mean, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just different. I I've done forums, I've done now Facebook, and now I'm getting into Reddit. And oh, wow, they're they're interesting. All right, let me go back to the Grand Adventure. That last one we showed with the coins, I believe that's all it was. Is you converted them to the alphabet. Um, 
that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Oh, Doug has said, I don't know if you discussed this while I was out. Um, he was assuming that everybody got a different puzzle for level two. And that could be the way that people don't just answer questions among them with their pals. Right. Well, you could have shared your answers for the crossword puzzle, but you're saying I, so that's actually a good point. So everybody could get a different level two puzzle so that it is kept separate. Yeah. But that's how do you idea. make sure that yeah. unless the technique's the same, how do you make yeah. sure it's the same level of difficulty? It's fair. Yeah, that's true. Right. Um, ba -ba -ba. Let me find a couple of the other ones. Playlist. <clears throat> so, Karen's saying, I don't know if any collaborators, there's no, but she's doing it. She's, she's doing it. See, and that's what I say for the people that like, do you have to have, I play a social game. There's no question. I've talked to people. I've heard hundreds of solves. I think it's helped me um, also be <laughs> in last place on this for a hunt, but should that be required? And that's, I think an interesting one. So Mike and I are actually talking about maybe putting a survey together of just what things do you prefer and what things do you not prefer? Because again, this 40 or 50, uh, when you have a couple hundred dollar coin, but when you're talking about a five, 10, $50,000 hunt, right. we've got to work this out. So, and Shannon is saying she won, but she has not given out any answers. She believes it is the thrill. She believes in that thrill of the chase. That's right. Let people do it on their own. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate that. Um, so here's a question for everybody before we get into the next puzzle. What would the prize have to be in order for you guys to pay for the next puzzle? What? Okay, now let's let's define pay. Let's say it's going to be what? How much? Mike that's, and I are debating. That was the question. How much oh, would they how pay? Much? How much would they pay for a puzzle? And how much would they want the prize to be in order to pay okay. for that puzzle? So, so your answer would be: I would pay fifty bucks for a five thousand yeah, dollar prize, exactly. or twenty five bucks, twenty five hundred dollar prize, fifty bucks for a thousand dollar prize, ten thousand. Right, right, right. I, I mean, for some, know. you know, for some people, fifteen hundred is a lot of money. For some people, they might be like, "I'm not going to do all this for fifteen hundred. I was just wondering if people have a. Answer. Yeah, I would say don't go over ten thousand. But if it's somewhere between a thousand and ten thousand, how how much would you pay to be a part of a hunt like? like that so well yeah you, <laughs> keep it realistic but, don't say a million dollars for ten dollars you got to keep it realistic i'll buy a 35 dollar book if i get yeah. the chance of a million dollars but well, most of it, these treasure hunts are in a book right you buy a book just like uh the forest fen book or end game or any of the other ones that have been out masquerade and it's usually around 20 to 30 bucks i think right yeah but I personally, this is just my personal preference. I don't like the ones that are books like breakfast, tea and bourbon. Right. I didn't want to have to read a whole book. TTOTC wasn't required. So I saw that as different. Um, so I like the ones like 12 plate. It was a scroll Shannon's. They were videos yours. They were video. I don't yeah. like the idea of you have a big old book that you have to read. That's me personally. So I don't know. I don't know. So AJ saying you could make the prize dependent on the number of participants, but if you only have like for this current grand adventure, we have 40 people. If it's $10 per person, it's only going to be 400 bucks. I mean, it's not, I think you have to give a bigger prize in order to entice more people to play. Right. And I think we have the um, strategy of paying for it a little bit on the first couple of hunts. Mm -hmm. So we pay a bigger prize, even if we don't get a return just for the first couple. So if it was, I pay 50 bucks to be a part of the $1,500 one or a $5,000 one, we might not break even the first couple, but then it would grow to the point of what if there was a $5,000 prize every six months and there were different hunts or every year or something. That's what we're looking at longer term is doing these and really spooling them up because you know, we're talking about a couple hundred dollar coin and there's a few of you that are ready to go. Awesome. But how can we get it? So it pays itself back and we get a little to be able to work these and, and walk well, them through. They take a lot of time because <laughs> yes. on the next one, you're helping me design these puzzles, Capro. So it takes, and you, and I take that yeah. back. Capro helped me with the coin puzzle that you guys love so much with the silver dollars. That's actually <laughs> Capro that filmed that. I gave her how to set up the coins, but she actually filmed that. So, um, so she, okay. So JBR princess, this is a great answer. I would pay $50 for a thousand or more. And right. you're right. A lot of hunts will have to buy a book or clothing. The usual amount is about $50 anyway. Yeah. So like $50 for a thousand dollar hunt. Well, what if it was $50 for a $10,000 hunt 
And we all got to go to Vegas once a year during the World Series. Or a Series. prize that's and, worth ten thousand dollars. It has a value yeah. of whatever five thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's yeah. what we're trying to come up with is for because there will be another grand adventure, I hope, before the end of this year. But we are going to charge for it something, and that's what we're trying to come up with. And yeah. and like we had four, we have forty people involved in the current grand adventure. How do we get four hundred people? How do you scale it so it's bigger? Do you right. make it a virtual do, hunt or do you actually bury something somewhere and they got to go find it? Yeah. Well, and I, again, even though breakfast tea and bourbon did a lot of good things. The one thing I didn't like about it is when Pete came on the video and said, the only way I'm going to do this, if you guys all tell your friends, no, like that's right. called marketing. He needs like, I'm not going to bring competitors in. I am going to tell everybody about these kinds of things. Cause I think adventures are cool, right. but that's on us to do. So we will do that part and we're okay with, doing a couple of these just to see, but, but just know this is the beginning with a couple of smaller ones and we're just getting ready to school up. Um, but I really like when, when Shannon says the thrill, I don't know if the thrill is the same when you solve it online than when you are on the ground and solve it. I've had some experiences with both. I love going somewhere. Um, right. I, I just, I, I'm actually like digging it up or getting it type of thing. So that's me though. I, if most of you say, no, I'm fine with a, with a hunt, I can do, you know, my butt in the chair and I can find it. I'm okay with that. And we can come up with some great, but, but that's why we're doing a lot of these is to figure out how to school up and really get some sponsorship and some things behind. We have some people interested in sponsoring um, and that just would be cool, but we've got to figure out exactly how to do it. Yeah, the right way. We don't want any problem with the rules. We want to make sure everything's up front before anybody ever pays any money and they know exactly what they're doing and what they're getting into type thing. But that's why we're doing these. But I love the idea of the puzzles through YouTube videos. I mean, I just, that's something new. Uh, there was the, um, we've lost our gold. Does anybody remember that with the puppets? They were pirate puppets and it was all YouTube videos and you could figure it out. Nobody solved it and they ended it. But that was um, one thing where people did it through YouTube videos. But most of these are in a book, right? Of some kind, you buy a book, right. the clues are in the book. Well, okay, so here is my idea is, okay, you do a grand adventure. And if you're the one of the top 50 to submit, then you go to Vegas during the World Series of Fen, and we actually do something on the ground that boots on the ground is required, and the top person there wins, you know, two grand, four grand, whatever it is. Yeah, so there's we do kind something of in person. Right. Yeah, because there's already 50 ser 54 searchers showed up to the last World Series of Fen. We might be able right. to get a couple hundred, and I don't know. So the thrill of the last three clues was freaking awesome. <laughs> hey, Mike, yeah. freaking awesome. There <laughs> is a like testimonial right there. Freaking awesome. And that's how it is with every treasure hunt. But yeah, I'm glad Shannon. Thanks um, that you had fun with it. But remember, there's still three prizes up for grabs, two coins and an awesome too far to walk official benchmark too far to walk map. Uh, all right. So here's the next puzzle. Chess. Everybody Anybody know how to play chess? Chess. chess. I'm teaching <laughs> Eric how to play chess. I okay, love chess. I don't have anybody to play with. King. King, where's your king? Oh, next time I see you, we're What's still playing. Do you play? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, oh my gosh, king? why are you surprised? All right, and what are these know what two pie pieces day was. Called? I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. I didn't even get an answer. The kids. I didn't get an Remember, answer. This is Chris and Eric. Okay. Those are the king and queen's kids. Yeah, this is actually called the bishop. But you could. These are the king. This is Chris and Eric. These are like the king and queen's kids. Bishop. Okay, where's your bishop at? That's right. Yeah, I think so. And what are these two? Knights. Knights. Good job. They're the horsies. Because the so the little intro I did was to kind of introduce the pieces to people, but you didn't know have to know how to play chess in order to solve this puzzle. I kind of did this to throw people off, and I also wanted to show Eric how to play chess. So, so this is the two castles that the whole family Eric lives looks in. Looks so little. Okay, so we yeah, have a king right. and queen. We have oh, bishops. We have knights. We have rooks. And then who are these guys? God. Guards. They guard the family. That's why they're in front. But they're called pawns. Okay. Pawns. All right. Now this is how they move. Are you ready? Uh, I know. <laughs> right. Well, hang on. There's rules how each piece moves. There's rules on how each piece moves. A pawn can only move one forward. That's it. Because they're so little, they can't. They can only move a short distance. One, and that's it. And, one, and that's it. And and I could. Two. Yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> Hang on. But there's an exception to the pawn. When the pawn takes its very first turn, it can jump two places. But only the very first time. After that, it can only move one all the way to the end of the board. Okay? So pawns are little guys. They only move one. 
to both. But my kids when they my first start stop, out, because they're so full. Of- how much we like chess in my household. Say it again. My kids have gone to chess camp. Oh, that's awesome! Now. I'd There's love to send my boys there. Chess camp, yeah. Oh, okay. We've gone to programming camp. We have like six hundred different camps here. Nice. Chess camp, but chess camp. You wouldn't think there. There's a chess camp. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> chess is an interesting game. Now, how do pawns move? How do All right. Pawns so move? what? Basically, I go through. And I give Eric horse, a little tutorial special. on how to play chess. But you didn't know you know this for the Whenever puzzle. Whenever it goes two, it has to go one to the right or left. So the horsey can go here, or the horsey can go here. Oh, in the middle. No, not the middle. It has to go two and then one to the right or left. It has to, always. Okay? That's a rule. Okay. The castles, let's move this out of the way. The castles can move as far as they want, but they can only go in a straight line, this way or this way. They can't go diagonal, and they can't go in an L shape. You either go forward and stop. So when you play your kids in chess, who wins? I have told my kids I will never let them beat me in anything until they legitimately <laughs> do it. So they have never beat, but we have a tournament. Oh, all right. So. Um, there's been a couple times my son wins, but mostly my daughter wins as a second bracket. I always win first. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So, oh, we're definitely. Would- wonder if we could make that a uh, World Series of Fen thing. How many people out there play chess? <laughs> a little, mm-hmm. a little tournament, a little competition of chess games. That'd be cool. I actually you know. want to get that three-person chess that you showed on your. Yeah, Facebook. that's crazy. I don't even know that how that would, would work. Insane. Yeah. Move one or two. So you want to move one? All right. Good job. All right. Okay, let's get to the puzzle turn. part. Now remember, oh, I didn't tell you, the queen can move in any direction. The queen is the most powerful piece on the whole board. Any direction, but cannot jump over pieces. So right now, your queen can only go here because she can't go over your other pieces. Yeah, there you go. Pawns, what would you do with that pawn right there? Attack! Attack the horsey, <laughs> get him. Yeah. All right, you got him. See, you won, you won the piece. So now he goes right here because he, whenever a piece attacks one, it takes his face over. You like that, huh? Do you got my horsey? <laughs> All right. Eric the chest. Are you wins. enjoying yourself, Mike? Reminiscing. Yeah. I haven't watched these videos in a long time. Four years old. Okay. I'll have to show this to Eric uh, when he's older. Okay, so check it out. This was the actual puzzle. When I was a kid. I love chess. I used to like the pieces. But none of my friends knew how to play. So I didn't have anybody to play with. So I had to learn, or I had to make up my own game. So here it is. Pay close attention. Oh, I want to... What? You want to what? I want to pick Karen's brain, because she remembers all these from last year, and it looks like she's in this year. And so I'm like, okay, which ones worked, which ones didn't? I think it'd be good to know. My arm in the way was totally uh, not on purpose, but then I thought, yeah, it does make it harder to see. So if you guys look in the red box, you see I'm saying there's turns, right? Certain turns. Okay. And then I move the other side. I almost don't want to give this away. I could use it again, but that's fine. (laughs) I'll use it again, but in a different way. So turn three. So how, so in other words, all these puzzles, you need to derive a word, right? Somehow there's a word encoded in these moves that I'm making. And the, what it turned out to be was, it's Morse code. The pieces that move is Morse code. Where, let me go back to the beginning. Where the horse, you can go, or this way. Okay, let me go back to the beginning. Very special. See, get chest with close attention. Okay. So in the very beginning, it says turn one. The turns are for the word. Every time it's a new turn, uh, I believe that's right. Let's see. (laughs) Let me make sure. So right there, I move two. Whenever a piece moves two, that's a dash. Oh. He moved one. That's a dot. Move two. That's a dash. Moved one. That's a dot. Turn two. So that very first word was dash, dot, dash, dot. Which is the letter C. Okay? Uh, okay, I see. So the, How clever. The moves of the pieces were Morse code. The dot and dash was if they moved two squares or they moved one square. So the first I letter was C. I thought for sure it would be like the place on the chessboard, like E7, you know. Yeah, like, and that's an idea too. Actually, that would be pretty good also. But that's oh. what this was. And this one threw a lot of people off. I think this one... So the way it worked is that every day at noon... You would not get, the way I did this is instead of releasing all the puzzles, I released one video and you didn't get the second video until you solved the one before it. 
and every day at noon is when I let the new video out. And this was the first time that nobody got the preceding. When this video came out, nobody had solved it by noon the next day. And this was oh, the first okay. video that did that. So if you go through, and you guys can do it yourself. So right there, I moved two, so that's a dash. I moved one, that's a dot. Two, that's a dash. At, I guess the clue oh, yeah. could have been that every piece moves either two or one. And in chess, you can move a lot more than so that. So how long did it take people, if you recall, how many days did it take people? Uh, to two days, two days. Somebody okay. got it on afternoon on the second day after 12. Well, I have a great another testimony. Holy crap. This one's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have, to, you have to write it out. That's true. But it's Morse code. It's the two. Well, once days. you figure out, then it's yeah. so simple. But you got to figure it out. That's All the right. hard part. Once you know the methodology, then it becomes easy. But what it's spelled, and I also like um, something I didn't do this time, is I like when you have an answer, it makes sense. You know for sure it's correct. And Confirmation. The, yeah, right. And that's totally not the way it is in the current Grand Adventure. Until the very well, end. The very well, end, you might realize something. What? Yeah, I think he channeled too much of your Forrest Fenn. Or in Forrest Fenn's, he doesn't have any confirmation that you pick up that prize. So you pick up that chest. Yeah, right. That's true. You don't know if you're right or not. Um but on this one, what it spelled out was cow chess, C-O-W-C-H-E-S-S. -S. Cow chess. I mean, you know you the word is right. It's me playing chess. Cow chess. So that's what this one was. So that's what you submitted is cow chess? That's right. You had to send wow. that as the answer. And then right okay. here, I give a, a URL, but you can't click on it. So you'd have to, did I put it down here? No, I didn't. So you would actually have to go to that. That really, that didn't help you solve the puzzle. It's just from War Games, where it's the computer saying, would you like to play a game? Because I love that movie. War Games, one of my favorite movies, along with Goonies, along with the Blues Brothers. But anyway, so that was it. Yeah, it was Morse code. So once you know the methodology, it's just a matter of writing down with a pen and paper, you know, the moves. So, and I came up with that. That one I made up. I'd never seen anybody do that before, but... uh yeah, I had a lot of fun making these, but it is time consuming. First, I've got to come up with the word, then I got to come up. And if you guys notice, what I do is I basically use the toys that are in my kids' room. I use those colored letters for the bathroom. I use coins. I use Legos, Matchbox cars. You know, that's is what that I'm doing. Is that why there's so many toys in that room? Yeah, right. There are <laughs> too many toys in that room. I'm like the Willy Wonka of puzzles or something, except candy. It's, it's toys. It's for the puzzles. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So I think that's about it. I mean, I'm not sure how many of them still up from last year. Let's see if we can find some more. One more. And then I'll go okay, into your, this one. This yeah, year. as you're finding more. So just stop mm -hmm. me whenever you find your. Yep, yep. But so that's the thing that we're trying to figure out now is what would a buy-in be? What would the prize need to be? And would you have a significant preference with boots on the ground um, or armchair? And the multi-level, Mike did this year. I don't know if he did this last year where it was like, if you get through the first 20 then you get on to level two, um, level one, level two type of thing. So if you have ideas and especially, you know, if you participated in, in lots of them or lots of different hunts, now I've been a part of four, five, six, seven different hunts um, and now making a few too. We want to hear from you because that's what we want. That's what we're working on. The That's what we're starting to brainstorm is um, we kind of want to do some treasure hunt and stuff. And if we can get some bigger prizes out for everybody, that'd be super cool. What are you laughing at, Michael? Doug waiting for hints or clues for 2019. So I will say this. We always said this is the year of treasure hunts. And it really is kind of like the end of last year, the beginning of this year. So Jenny Kyle's got gold medallions that she's mm -hmm. hiding for free. We have 2019 Forest Fence Searcher Coin Silver that we're hiding for free. Um, Genetic Blend did some treasure hunts, right, for like $4.99. Uh, yep. Mysterious Writings did some scrolls for like four ninety nine, right? Yep. Um, Odia Soul. Yeah, Odia, Odia Soul, Soul had the I Treasure Hunt. That's right. Yeah. And I believe yeah. that was and free. Then, or did you have to pay? I'm not sure. No, it was free. It was, it free. was free, right. We couldn't participate because we donated some things to it. So, right, but right, right. It, it was fun to watch. Talk about someone's mind and just, it was super creative. I loved it. Yeah. And then Copper Dan. Yeah, Copper, Copper Dan's, Dan's got his done. treasure hunts that he's doing, and Copper yeah. Dan will be on the show on Monday to go over the latest one that he did. Yeah. And um, then the 13 cast came out for The Secret. Yeah, which is another awesome one. Um, I have no idea where that is, but it's an interesting one to look at and uh, try and play with. But I think the puzzles are just good to take a break from Forest Fen. In the off season, it's great because you have something to do. But even in the summertime, I mean, we're probably going to do another grand adventure this summer, would be my guess, or fall a bigger mm -hmm. one. Um, and yeah, it's just, you take a break. It's good to take a break from 
Well, and I want to throw out, Karen just said, I can't ever do boots on the ground because they're never close to me. Well, think about it this way. Let's say there was a thousand people that solved a, and if you were one of the top 50, you had to fly to Vegas for a $5,000 prize. So if you flew to Vegas, you get a little vacation time and Mm -hmm. you get a $5,000 prize and you know, you're one of 50 rather than thousands and thousands and thousands. Would you be willing to go to Vegas for a couple days to do that. Would that be incentive enough to go boots on the ground or to have a boots on the ground option? But and Mike and I, that's what we're debating right now. But you would be getting to Vegas on your own. We're not paying for you to right. go to Vegas. I want to make sure that's clear. Right, but, right. So maybe so, we but, do a grand adventure like this through videos and there's like 40 winners and those 40 winners come out to Vegas to play for something for like a grand prize. Yeah, and we do it at the same time as the World Series yeah. event. So there's already a bunch of people there. And like, if you've ever gone to the World Series of Poker, there's like a group of people around and they could be around and watching. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's, and that's what Mike and I are discussing now. Is it a bunch of clues and you go and find something? Or is it more like a survivor where you have some clues and puzzles and Sudoku's and things? And once you get to the end, there's one winner and you actually get to watch it. I think the thrill wouldn't be as great if you were the person, but if you get to watch all of that happen, that could be super cool too. What if it was like an escape room or something? Yeah. Yeah. Escape rooms are really fun. Yeah. Well, Shannon, that's something. Maybe you got to bring them. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is there, but (laughs) she said her man won't let him, won't let her go to Vegas. Well, maybe you got to bring them with you. I don't know. Um, No, here, here I have a great, I need a cover story. Um, We need a consultant um, that that has had experience in the field and I need a resume and we'll work work through it, girl. (laughs) Well, Shannon, if you could possibly win $2,000 or $3,000, would he let you come to Vegas then? You know, (laughs) well, you know, I don't know. If that would change things or not, but oh boy! So yeah, yes. that's what the ideas that me and K Pro are kicking around. Hopefully, we make it happen for the World Series event next year. But that's why we're kind of doing these puzzles. Hey, um, John, boots on the ground, clothing. How are you? And Joshua's doing treasure hunts as well. So. Yeah, oh, we didn't even mention that. I think kind of the biggest one right now is boots on the ground. Oh wait, I, and again, right. I have boots right. on the ground clothing. That seems to be all I wear. So and the only thing my daughter has stolen my red sweatshirt and I'm pretty unhappy about that but yeah. um, boots on the ground clothing she's decided and actually Mike gave Sammy uh, my daughter uh, boots on the ground clothing the sweatshirt because it was a medium and it fits her perfectly yeah. um, the one that he won his adventure so she wears that all the time and you know what people always ask her what does BOTG stand for? What does BOTG stand for? What is BOT? And she's like, boots on the ground clothing. My mom is a treasure hunter. And then they all look at me and I'm like, (laughs) okay, let me explain. So she wears it everywhere. And that's the best marketing ever. This is like built in marketing. Um, Anyway. Doesn't this look like a crossword puzzle? I thought the the wall in my bathroom there looks like a, the, the the tiles look like a crossword puzzle. I thought that was kind of cool. All right. So hints for the current grand adventure. There are four people that are on level two. You solve level two, you win the grand adventure. Two people have won so far. Four people just got confirmed that they were on level two today. I will say this. The answer to level two is not a number. I've had more than one person send me a number. Um, And then for this hint, for puzzle number one, I realized that I may have uh, be, I want to make sure I explain something. So at the very end, you see the shift. So that will probably tell you something about the, puzzle but right here there's a key it does mean that it's a keyed cipher you need a key but what i want to make sure is just because there's five keys wait one two three four five six yeah just because there's six keys that i showed does not mean that the key is six letters i just put the keys out there that is not on purpose okay so i think some people are thinking oh it must be six letters the key it's not I'm telling you right now, it's not six letters. And I didn't want to infer that it's six letters because there's only six keys. I just laid the keys out there to give you the hint of, hey, there's a key involved. And that's how many laid that way. You know what I mean? So the key is not six letters. I'll give you that. And if you see at the very end, you have to shift. So if that'll tell you anything, there's a key involved and you have to shift. Oh, shift. Okay. Yeah. Do you get it right? You have to shift. I actually, when I saw that one, I thought reverse. That's what it. Oh, okay. We'll see. And Calpurnia, I'm going to let you guys still figure out Calpurnia. That is a hint to the type of cipher. And that's all I'm going to say on that one. Um, The other one that people are having a problem with is this one. Is this one. And I will say this about this one. 
you have to uh, re- re- ah, you have to recognize what the picture is in each of the drawings. You have to recognize what the correct word is. If you don't have the word to which each drawing re- to what each drawing represents, you're never going to solve the puzzle. And that's all I'm going to say on that one. So some of them are easy. So I could say, look, uh, some of them are easy. So I could say, like, look, this is a flashlight, right? Up here, those are binoculars. But maybe this one, what would this be called? What do I usually call that coin? Maybe there's a couple different answers there. Um, so you have to get the correct word from what each of these drawings represent. So this is a two-level puzzle. First level is you got to understand what the what's in the drawings, and then the second part is the Legos. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And the crayons and the coins have nothing to do with it. I just pushed them out of the way. <laughs> so... All right, and I think that's it. So I've given away three hints for the current Grand Adventure. Good luck, everybody. And I want to invite Josh on. We're having some technical issues with his um, headset and or maybe on our side or something because someone asked him, is he having any legal issues? He's heard a rumor. I know he switched names. Um, I do not believe because I've had long discussions with Josh. Um, I think it was more marketing um, or all marketing and looking long term. So if he wants to come on and discuss things, um, talk about a treasure hunter and a live soul that he's just fun to talk to about looking at the future and kind of all these hunts and things. So um, we invite him on as well once we can figure all of that out. So, yeah, um, come on on, Josh, and explain to everybody what you're doing and what you want to do um, yeah. for sure. Yeah, we just got to figure out some technical issues like Kate Pro said. So, yeah, the Grand Adventure, don't think it's too late. Just because some people are on level two um, doesn't mean they're automatically going to get it. Um, I don't know how many days it took Shannon, but I know she didn't get it in the very first day. So if anybody's just hearing about this for the first time, go to Collazers.com, click on the Treasure Hunt menu, and click on Collazar's Grand Adventure, and you will see all the puzzles. You'll see the crossword puzzle, and go for there. Backpack or rucksack? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? You got to figure that out. Nice. Now, what well, a lot? Can, yeah. Go ahead. No, no. Go. I want to talk all about Grand Adventure because I do have something for us. I want to talk about, but oh, okay. Uh, no, I was just going to say that some people have filled out the crossword puzzle correctly, so they're trying to guess by the letters that they know are right what the word is. Yeah, that's valid. You can try that, but I think some of these words might be hard to guess. So go back to the puzzle. See if you can figure out it. See if you can figure out the word from the puzzle. That's all I got to say. Okay, very cool. Um, Well, so some of you may have seen um, that I posted up on Facebook, Thor, and a couple of other places, I think on Reddit, I can't remember, um, that we're gearing up for April. April is almost here, and there is a strong possibility that we're going to be talking Forest Fen again. So Mm -hmm. much so, um, I think it's so confident that we are looking for topic ideas um, when I threw it out to the different groups, I got let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, about thirty or forty different suggestions of topic ideas. So we're definitely going to do Monday nights. We'll do Thursday nights as we have some thoughts. Um, let's see. Hold on. We have, still have we have a question, Mike. Four people currently in level two, not including the level two winners. Correct. That is correct. And I will also say, back to the bathroom puzzle um, cipher or puzzle, puzzle number one, the bathroom, the shower puzzle, um, the key word that you're looking for is not just some random word. By looking at the video, you should be able to figure out what the key word is. That's all I'll say about that. All right. That's enough hints, I think. Okay. So, and Karen gives a piece of advice. Do not just turn in random words. She is speaking from experience. (laughs) Well, especially since, and that is the reason Mike put that governor on of once every day at noon. So people, yeah, you should let me recommend the next clue. Ooh, odious soul. Right. <laughs> so check it out. By next week, if Grand Adventure is still humming along by next week, say Thursday, if we go live, then Shannon, I'll talk to you. You can um, you can recommend what the next clue is that I give out. Uh, and yeah. Boots on the, the Ground Clothing says Forrest Fen hunts coming soon. Does that Uh-oh. mean that? 
They're going to be related to if you know knowledge about Forrest Fenn or are you collaborating with Forrest What well, does that gonna, mean? He's going to have to come on the show and explain what that Ooh, means. Oh, okay. I like it. Because I think that was actually Shannon, some of Shannon's. Like some of some of the, when you solved it, it related to yeah. know about Forrest Fenn's. Right. And then some of them were not related at all, which was kind of cool. So um, I like I like Shannon's idea. And we'll sneak her on. Well, again, we need a consultant to come on that would <laughs> You see this consultant angle I'm working Mike with Shannon? Uh-huh, I got you. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. And you know, there might be a Vegas trip in her future. Nah. Um, okay. So okay. Oh, we got some eBay auctions I want to talk about. Oh, why don't you yeah, why don't you do that first and then I'll talk about Force Fen just after that. All right, let me bring it up. So we've got Force Fen. Yeah, cool. If you guys don't know, there is a gold Force Fen medallion on eBay. Brian P. Uh, decided to put his medallion on eBay, if I can find it. Uh, uh, there it is. And he, I don't know why, but he listed it for $1,881, which one is an odd amount. Why not 1800 or 1850 But he listed it for $1,881. It's got two days and 21 hours left and has no bids. 1800 seems a little high to me, but you never know. There might be somebody that just has to have it. And they might bid on it. So just putting it out there, it's there if anybody wants to bid on it. And then the other one is Coin36, Forrest Fen Coin36. You can't see this K-Pro because I'm not sharing it, but they can see it. Uh, or you'll see it on the replay. Right. I can see. I put up Coin36. This is my auction. It is for a searcher that just kind of decided to step back from the chase. And this person said, hey, can you put this coin up for me? And I said, are you sure you want to do that? And originally they said, I've got some Forrest Fenn stuff and I'll just sell it to you for face value for what I paid for it because I'm kind of done. And I said, well, remember, you got that coin 36 for, from me for $15. And I said, I can't just give you $15 for it. But what I said is I will put it on eBay and we will split whatever it goes for. So that's what we're doing. So it's at $300 right now. It ends in one hour and 12 minutes. So coin 36 out of the thousand, I mean, it's pretty low. We'll see if yeah. it jumps up or not. And good luck for anybody that. Uh, and someone just asked me if I'm going to bid on it. And I'm like, the only person I know is Mike to help me figure out how eBay I, works. I'm going to try to figure out in the next hour. If it goes for 300, I'm going to barf. So I, I'm <laughs> going to figure this out in the next hour because 30, if we have. I just, well, yes. I'm not going to bid on it because I put it up. So it's like, you can't, no, bid on I your tried own to see if you could do it and you can't, yeah, no, you can't bid on your own auction. eBay doesn't allow that. So, yeah, so if you want to bid on it, you know, K pro, you've got to set up your own eBay account. It's I not know. hard, but okay. I, well, that's it's not hard for some people. It's not hard for some people. Right. Okay. Yeah. So 300 bucks coin 36. That's pretty awesome. Uh, we'll see. Oh, <laughs> okay, Mike, since we've discussed exactly this, I yeah. am going to throw this out. Do you see what Doug said? Uh, I want to see a right, solid right. gold four spin searcher coin as a prize. That would be an awesome prize, wouldn't it? A real gold, real 14 karat gold four spin searcher coin. I mean, that's like $8,000 or something. That is a prize for a treasure hunt. But you never know. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe we'll get there someday. Uh, we'll th Let's just say that idea is being kicked around, I will say. And yeah. Holly, I did see that the four spin amulet that's on eBay, it is not four spins. And that has come out in the blogs, et cetera. So if you're bidding on that, um, authenticate, authenticate before you bid or take or whatever. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> so, and if you'll check Mike, if you will yeah. check Doug's email, he's I'm saying, you check it, it right now. The, okay. So he's going to click away while I talk, let's transition over to, are there any more eBay auctions you want me to talk about? No, <laughs> that's talk it. About? There's other coins that are out there, but, um, a lot of people have put the 2019 silver coin up, but they have like a buy it now for $350, you know, I don't know, maybe yeah. somebody will buy it. Maybe somebody won't. The other thing, okay. Doug, is check your spam folders, everybody. I've emailed some people back and they're like, I never got it. Maybe it's in your spam folder, but I'll check for your email, Doug. Okay, so here is what I would like to do. I would like to name off about 20 of the different topics. Mike and I, right now, this shows you how much work goes into these shows. Um, and especially like if you watch Shannon show and you see all the background and research that she does and a few other searchers that are really great on YouTube, we want to, um, really gear that up for April. So we're starting to ask now, um, trying to see that, yes, we're going to come back in April. Um, so I started asking the different parts of the community, what would you like to see? And, 
Um, I sent Forrest Fenn an email and he responded, I never saw that thing. I never saw that thing. Um, but are we talking about the eBay auction, right? Uh, I think she's talking about the amulet. This yeah, is all, which all is on it. eBay, right? Yeah. Yeah. I The way I read it was not that Forrest Fenn owned it. I thought somebody said, maybe this is something Forrest Fenn left. But I didn't think it said no. for sure this is a Forrest Fenn item. But maybe yeah. I read it wrong. I don't know. In other well, words, that, they found was, it in the wilderness somewhere. Yeah, and that's one thing that I want to say is some people said, I just got... They emailed for us and said, I'm getting ready to take my kids out right now as the bears are coming out in Yellowstone and I'm going. And he said, why don't you wait a little while? Oh my gosh. He said he was leaving the chase and he didn't just like me. I said, I was stepping away. He Forrest Fenn is not, in my opinion, this is only my opinion. He is not walking away from the chase. He right. is not disappeared. He is saying he's stepping back. And I think the exact quotes is from social events and the amount of time he can respond to emails because he was getting hundreds each day. He is not, in my opinion, he is not disappearing from this chase by any means. It's his and treasure so, hunt. He's not ever going to disappear. He's just not going to email people the way he used to. That's all. Right. In or my, be opinion. at every event and talk with different right. people. I have a, I have a friend that was at the World Series event and she posted on her Facebook. She actually got some time with Eric Sloan's family and Forrest's family and posted a bunch of mm -hmm. pictures up. And uh, it was, I mean, he's still, he is still a, a, a part of the community. He is just not, and some people think it's a positive. He's not going to be as much involved with all of the searchers as he has been. I mean, he met what? 100, 200 searchers at the Jamie event. I don't see him doing those kinds of things. Um, I think I emailed Jamie or she posted about February. Is he going to go? He hasn't committed to that yet. I mean, there's a lot of dependent variables and independent variables um, that he'll need to work through. But I, I think some people have assumed, like I've asked on a couple when they're saying he's walking away, tell me the quote that you saw. And they're like, oh, that he's not going to social events. That's different than I just think some people have assumed. Um, yeah, he does speak English clearly. <laughs> and so I just say, like, you should probably look at exactly what he said and not be surprised if he does respond. But then also don't be surprised if he doesn't. He just can't keep up with the emails. Again, just my opinion. I haven't talked to him uh, on this specific issue. So um, he is still Forrest Fenn, the hider of the infamous chest of gold <laughs> found in New Jersey. Yeah. Sorry. And JBR, yes, a real gold coin would be amazing. But uh, let's just say it's been thought of. It's just very expensive. So we'll see. We'll see. Very expensive. But as expensive as we're talking about, if the next one, if it would, well, we're, it, it's, in, yeah. it, it's in discussion. So we'll see if it kind of emerges as one of the leading ideas. So, okay. So here's what I wanted to do as a way to wrap up um, tonight. If you are part of the Forest Fen community hunt, and I know some of you are, and some of you are just Grand Adventure, not just Grand Adventure, but not a part of the Forest Fen community. So I'm speaking to some of you that are a part of the Forest Fen community. Of If you were to pick, I would like each of you to pick one. I'm going to name off about 20 and wait until I name off all 20 of the different ideas that are out there for April show ideas. And I'm going to do this for the next couple of shows and see which ones emerge from the community that, because Thor, even though I put it on Thor, the Thor community isn't exactly the same as the community that actually comes and represents in the chat room. So the, um, I'm going to throw out probably the top 20 that I saw. Um, and then if there's others that you want to throw out as ideas, um, Throw, throw them out because we're open to it. And so it's really kind of an, an idea of what you guys would like to see and then what we want to actually take our time and go and, you know, t take the time to research. So here are, here they are. So if you hear something, wait until you hear them all because I just want to take one from each person. Um, here is a <laughs> trivia. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think trivia went terribly wrong. Uh, terribly <laughs> wrong. We tried it several times. We might try it again, but <laughs> I'm just getting the giggles thinking about trivia. The I'm people sorry. who did one, who did win that trivia should have got their poker chips. So just putting nice. that out there. <laughs> okay. Actually, someone has already said which one of them are is who is Chris L. Um, many people have asked me, did you just say your name differently? And is it Christy? No, it, it was not me, but who is Chris L? Um, the 200 footer lead searcher. That seems to be a discussion. Um, the resources for new searchers. There's a lot of new searchers trying to figure out 
Uh, what's a scrapbook? What are the different books? Where are their hints? What Jenny site versus Dow site versus Thor versus other places? Um, what does that look like? Um, expectations of the finder. What are we going, what are we, um, what do we look at? What do we say that uh, when the finder finds something, we expect them to at least just say they have found? What do we expect? Um, Eric Sloan, um, which map is important? Um, we have hundreds of maps, right? right? No, I kid. Um, which map is important? It, the map in specifically that's in, um, that Forrest has provided, the one that's right up here. Um, why are there certain things called out? There is a misspelling. Is that a big deal? Um, one that I think we always need to discuss is safety. Um, noise, how do you get away from the noise? Uh, there's so much out there. Um, book versions. I've gotten four versions of books. There are some small differences between them. Um, I have somebody who's found or who has all the rest of them and they're going to do a comparison. So um, rolling out, there are 11 versions or 11 printings of the books. Um, what are the differences between the 11 printings? Uh, what is specialized knowledge? Um, specialized versus non-specialized knowledge because Forrest has said that. Um, six questions. Has that been discussed or not? Um, the FOIA process. What? How are you able to apply for a FOIA? How does that work? Um, not what the FOIA answers are, but why is it even legal? Why was it even put? What is the process? That's um, an interesting one. I'd be interested to know that because I don't know. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'll put one vote right there for Mike. Um, sitting bowls, peace by, why sitting bowls so important to forest, great pet. Um, uh, again, somebody said that it's been really, really discussed, but WWWH, um, can we look at it again? What does it take to be a good detective? How do you get rid of all the extra information? How do you get the treasure chest home? Um, why wait the 30 days? Forrest Fenn quotes you think are most important. <laughs> Doug, How is it? Sorry, Doug just had a good one. The most ridiculous theories regarding the Forrest Fenn treasure. Ah. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> Oh, my mic is so much better. I'm so glad. Um, how is it hidden? Tax implications and why are there two versions of Once Upon a While? Those are the ones that kind of led. There was a bunch more, but I just took kind of the ones that maybe. So enter now if you have some ideas like, oh, this one. Mike has already put in the FOIA process. because Yeah, I want to do that one. Yeah, I'd like to know. That's a hot, but I can, I can tell you from experience, and I have been on both sides of the FOIA process, I will tell you. Um, and so I can give my experience from both sides of it. Um, so anyway, if you have one that you um, really want to have emerged or one of the one, because we're probably going to be able to hit maybe three or four. Um, and, and I like the idea of having one kind of open mic night, kind of like hump day or Friday Fandango, kind of an open night. Um, but if there's one in particular that you like, either email me or put it in chat now. But those are the ones that we're kicking around. Um, I like the 200 footer FOIA process resources for new searchers. I like that one for the, there's a lot of new people and I seem to repeat that a lot, um, of where to go and why Jenny site versus Dow site versus, um, safety. I love that one. Um, Sledneck gave that one. So thank you. Um, what is a FOIA freedom of information act, Doug and M, um, forest home was raided in 2009, about less than a year before, um, the rate or he, he, his home was raided a year before he hid the treasure chest. If you believe he hit the treasure chest, like he said, in 2010, the treasure chest was a part of the raid. There is a, as a, um, American citizen, you are able to go through the freedom of information act for a variety of reasons to be able to get the information, which includes pictures and descriptions of what was in the treasure chest. Um, there's a lot of opinions of whether that is his personal information or not. Um, our country says it is not, but there is an ethical line that some have been debating. Uh, I didn't realize this was such a debate. I, I've had one happen with me on the other side of things. So, um, so anyway, I can walk through that. Um, anyway, 200 footer idea. What should we do when we find it? The 30 days tax implications. Um, okay. Those are the ones kind of emerging and then freedom of information act request. I um, have no idea who Chris, Chris L is. Why is that even a question? The last scrapbook that came out that did some phenomenal research. If you haven't seen it, Mike, I, oh, I don't know oh, about it when he got shot down. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. 
So Chris L is the one that submitted that. So oh, people, okay. everyone gotcha. wants to find Chris L because if he found that, what else has he found that uh, would be? Um, and uh, okay, Eric Sloan. I think Eric Sloan might be a significant part. Yeah, of, I've heard that yeah. name more and more lately. So yeah, okay. Well, and we have a mutual friend that is really into Eric Sloan art and spent time with Eric Sloan's family. So maybe we could get her and her husband on. That would be kind of cool. I don't mm-hmm. know if she would, but um, anyway. <laughs> the compass story with the forest fan map. We had that story. Oh, That's what they're referring okay. to, I think, with the compass story. Maybe it's a different one. Compass story. I'll add that to the list. Um, what would you expect from the finder run for president, solve world peace? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, Disappear I mean, and never be heard from again, <laughs> probably. Yeah. So um, those, that's actually a, a good one. What do we expect from the finder? And I think the minimum is to say anonymously, they found it to all the way through, they are public and say how the solves and how they did it, et cetera. And I think it would be interesting to go from, and some people have said, and they've been very clear, they owe no one anything and they don't care if people die. They are not sharing if they found it. Um, and I think that's an ethical discussion. So some of these mm-hmm. ethical lines, I think, could be really, really interesting to, to discuss. Should we expect some hiking trips to the spot as well as other salt spots? Yeah, some people have said if they find it wherever it is, they're going to secure the land and then put a... Put a, um, a a museum of sorts. Um, I didn't realize, I thought the compass story somebody had put out. So Holly's saying too, the compass story, that's an easy one since it was, uh, well, um, okay. That one's yeah. Um, isn't the FOIA kind of cheating, not the spirit of the whole thing. Um, Doug, that, that word has actually been used. So, um, yes, I think that could at least be a discussion is some mm-hmm. people think that should disqualify you from the chase. If you are a part, just like if you buy something on eBay, as part of, because is there stated rules, unstated rules? These are all the gray areas that we're talking about. I will say Forrest has not put out a set of rules to say it is or is not. Um, it is definitely legal, but is legal the ethical line? And there's right. some ethical theories that you can really get into about it. And if the person gets the FOIA, is it different? Because rumor has it that someone already has the FOIA and they're keeping it private. Um, I have said, and I'm open, I, I didn't choose this to be out, but I have started through the FOIA process um, and I have applied for the FOIA and I would share it with the entire community. Does that change things? Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's cheating either way. And if you share it with everybody, but if somebody already has it right now, is it more fair to give it to everyone? Um, And Matt, I, I personally agree. Why are, so I thought it was just going to be more fun to see the different I don't think there'll be anything in the FOIA that helps you find where the treasure chest is just to get a picture of each of the 256 gold coins, the Eagle double yeah. Eagle to know what year they are, to know what condition they're in. To me, that would be yeah. interesting. I want to see what the items yeah. that are in the chest. That's all. Well, and one searcher said, if you put out all that's in there, you're cheating the person because they should be able to try to cheat the IRS and say that certain things <laughs> weren't in there. Well, it was a year beforehand. Yeah. Just because it was in there a year beforehand. Don't doesn't know if they're so still, still in there. That right. one, I don't. So I think, Again, we're sitting here talking about the FOIA. I think uh, the FOIA is a hot, I mean, it comes up. show, whole other show. Yeah, it, it definitely probably should be discussed, but it's it's a lengthy process. It was a joint raid, both BLM and FBI, and all of that was discussed. Um, and so at least the process, not the results, mm-hmm. um, but at least the process could, could definitely be discussed. Um, so, okay, I see two emerging. I see the, the compass story, um, but has the 200 footer been put to rest? I, I don't know. Has, have we, the lead searcher is, I mean, I think the most compelling evidence has never hit um, YouTube. Um, I think it has hit some of the forums and people pretty much ignored it. Um, I think it's, there's a lot of information out there um, on the 200 footer and who fits really well with it and exactly where they searched. Um, And I just don't think that that's been fully discussed, but that's just me. Maybe it's not a big deal at all. And we leave it alone. So um, I see, I thought FOIA was personal. No, anything personal is excluded. There's a redaction process. Well, we can go into that in length. Anything personal is redacted. I've done it myself. So I know the redaction process um, that if somebody wants particular information, um, the person that is, they, they get certain things redacted. Anything else is open and fair game. 
We can do a show on that. Yeah, I think we should do a show on it, actually. but Because people probably yeah. want an update on where it is and what's going on. I but didn't I, I will. <laughs> well, well, I mean, do you have it yet or not? People want to know that. Put it that way. That's an update, you know. Uh, but I would say that if you think what Forrest Fenn put in the treasure chest is personal, well, he, he hid it for somebody to find. It's out. It, the poem is public. In other words, find it, you can keep it. That's To me, that's not personal. The items aren't personal, meaning we're all looking for it. He said whoever finds it gets to keep it. So I don't look at it as personal like that, but it's just my yeah, opinion. It's kind of interesting because Matt says, um, look at it this way. Chris L invaded his privacy by doing his research and uh, with public searches. Right. And this is where I think it's kind of interesting because I actually have seen a ton of research done on Forrest Fenn's family, et cetera, like birth certificates, Where people are like buried, yeah. grade reports, all of that. And I, for some reason, I think that's too far, but I don't think the FOIA is. And right. maybe I would come to some different knowledge because I'm up for the whole reason I wanted it is to share it with the community to make it even playing field. Maybe that is wrong. I'm open to not necessarily moving well, sharing or whatever. Um, so I, I'm up for learning from all of you. I, I'm surprised that it's this much of an issue. I will say that people that have been through the FOIA process or understand it really well, they're saying, I'm surprised too. There's so many people that are saying it's personal. It's not personal. They didn't go through his personal things. They, it, they went through his office or the items that are up for the FOIA are his offices and his laboratory. And um, you could say what's in his vault is personal. Well, how many people has Forrest Fenn brought into his vault? Hundreds, right? It's oh, not so personal. Be. People have taken pictures in there. I have a picture of Forrest in his vault. You know what I mean? It's not like he's bringing you in there and saying, but don't look over there or don't look at this. It's Forrest Fenn likes showing off his collection, right? Yeah, yeah, opinion. but it is his collection, so I can see the yeah. gray area, and that's where right. I think that there is a fruitful discussion to have. Yeah. Um, so um, the contents of the uh, – well, and I do think – here's the other piece – I do think it's interesting that the full contents have not been disclosed. So is there a hint in there? Is this, and if we don't solve it for us, wait, he says, read my poem and then go out and solve them. If we don't solve it like that, does that mean that we're cheating? Maybe it is cheating. Maybe we right. say that there are some rules that we say you, and some people say, and it's funny because the people that are the most vocal are the ones that visit him quite often and get little tidbits of things. Um, but is it okay that some people visit for spend? Is the FOIA okay or not okay? Is it okay that some people have it and some people don't? So somebody threw out the ethics of the chase. Um, what is the ethics of the chase? And since for Forrest has so many contradictory statements, is it kind of buyer beware? <laughs> if, if it's not in his book and it's not in the poem, then everything else is just, eh. Um, well, the other thing is, Forrest always says, I thought of everything. Well, maybe you didn't. Maybe you didn't think of this one thing, <laughs> which I think is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. So why do we need to establish the contents of the chest were in his house? Much of his collection is on display at various places. That's true, but none of those were actual items in the chest. Why hasn't he put items in the chest? Get back in the box. He has said that. Is there, There's one high-res picture, and that high-res picture... I had to get permission, written permission from Forrest to put on Thor. Why? I think there's a hint there that we're missing. And if we were able to see more items, maybe, or maybe not, maybe you would just see more items. I don't know. I just think right. there's But there's we'll a have a show. There. We'll talk about it. Okay. We it can spend like hours it. on this topic, I think. How about safety tips on hiking off trail? I really like that one. Or I'll just say safety tips in general. Before I went boots on the ground, and Mike, now that you've been boots on the ground for days, and I know you, <laughs> yeah. that you had some safety issues, mm -hmm. and you took a five and seven year old, you know, you took little ones. Right. What is, what are the things that you absolutely need to look for and consider yeah. and think about and Definitely. all of that? So, um, yeah, so I, you know, I, I think that, Definitely, um, definitely there is are, one. Well, that's interesting. Has anyone else looked for land owned by people attached to Forrest Fenn or owned by Forrest Fenn himself? There are quite a few in Yellowstone. It's public information. Well, that's interesting. There's no legal issues if he owns the land that the treasure chest is on, right? But I would think he would have thought of that, but never know. Still interesting he, to talk about, isn't it? He has thought about that, but if he that may be why he says he has thought about that. So like that one quote where he talks about Indian reservation would make it very complex. Private land wouldn't as long as you're not trespassing. Um, I agree with Josh that there is some 
um, private land that he has or does own. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting, Maybe. Josh, though, that some a lot of people, someone just asked on the blocks the other or on Facebook the other day, does anyone know of any land that he's owned up in Wyoming, Montana? And it's like, I hate to say this is where I felt a little bit like a vet. I'm like, yeah, haven't you seen <laughs> the deed? I've seen the deed and several. But what um, if... Um... And, so just thinking out loud, I mean, could he have donated land up there somewhere to some uh, to some organization? You know how he donated things to the Cody Museum. Could he have donated land that just has a stipulation? This land's never to be built on. It's never to be touched. Yes. And here's the thing. Right. If we could figure out who it was, there could be a FOIA request specifically on that. Look up Soldier Stone. If you guys don't know what that is. Right, right. Soldier Stone is a donor came forward to want to say thank you to the soldiers and soldiers have figured it out and they all go to this place and it's all about so it's in the middle of nowhere colorado you go there there is no brochure on it there is no website on it it is public land and there is nothing because that was the stipulation that the donor gave so when donors give that that is that that's what the foia is for so you can't do anything sneaky um and maybe the sneaky is what we need to Fill it out. Mm -hmm. Forrest owns a private memorial land, maybe. Rob G. I there's some know. that do so. Now, I do have to say there's been a ton of work on this, and there's been a ton of the vets that have come way back who has found a lot of different land that he's owned. And we know he's owned in Colorado. He never lived there, like one of the leading searcher researchers had said. Um, but how about search states and why? Or is that too plenty of a discussion? Yeah. I don't think so, Laura. Like I, many people, one person said, and I didn't put it on the list, of why isn't Colorado thought about more? We right. did. I was, was just going to say that. Yeah, was it here? I think it was on Toby's, North versus South, or maybe it was here, North versus South. Mm -hmm. um, I, because I've searched in all states. I've boots on the ground except for Colorado in all states. Um, and so I think there's lots of good discussion there. Maybe we should uh, do a video on how, what's the process to look up a land deed. How do you, how do you look it up? Hmm. What do you have to do? Do you do it online? Do you have to be in person? Do you have to pay something? Like, how do you do it? People can it do it themselves though. wherever they want. But varies it varies totally by state. Varies. No, it varies by county. It's a county. Oh, um, by county. Okay. Oh, so yeah. you would have to search each individual county in a state? Right. Oh. And the larger counties all have an, some of them have a um, electronic where you can see the cover page. Yeah. Um, some of them have electronic where you can only get the number and then you have to buy it electronically. Okay. And some of them, when you're in little tiny towns in Wyoming and Montana, you actually have to send in by <laughs> snail mail and they send back to you a like <laughs> copy of the microfish, which is, yeah, that's. And is that's that awesome. cheating? If somebody was to do that, do people consider that cheating? I don't know. You know, yeah. there's different levels of this. There's different uh, opinions. So. Yeah. Um, there was one more that I company. saw that um, Shell Company needs to be liabilities. Oh, some are already getting rejected. His sister and Donnie owned a real, uh, realty company. Yeah. I, <laughs> well, did. I didn't know that. Well, you know what? I would like William to just come on and just um, <laughs> maybe uh, just be able to take some truth serum and say some things. Um, Yes. <laughs> William yeah, and then they got married. Yeah. Yes, they sure did. Um, and so, yeah, there's, there's, and these are all the little fun things that come up that um, I think, I don't know if a lot of people have, there's one blog that is now down um, that I think a lot of us is hopefully we screen captured um, and had a tremendous amount of research. Um, and now she's no longer doing that stuff. So she's pulled it all down. So um, yeah. So I wonder if Forrest put a gun in the chest. Um, he didn't say he did. And I think that chest was pretty jam packed. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's different types of, uh, the, and that was the one that got put up is different types of land. I probably spent about 10, 15 hours. And I can tell you, I talked to three or four different attorneys when I was going through national parks versus national forest versus state land versus BLM. And they actually had some different interpretations and especially depending on something that they could find in the chest that might make it different, um, just based on the poem, Trove, I Give You Title, they interpret it differently. So I don't feel as comfortable going on and saying, here's what we think, because then somebody could come back and say, this is what we well, said. Well, it's all opinion, right? 
Right. Make, we should make that clear. I know AGK has it in the description of every one of their videos, but I don't think it's necessary. These are all opinions. So. Yeah, but once I started seeing, uh, talk about layers of the onion, I went, yeah. oh my gosh, I don't think I can get into <laughs> the, being an expert in any of that. So, I mean, we have too many attorneys like a Joel Lewicki. I think he should wait. Hey. I don't know if he's a real estate attorney or not, um, but I, I, I yeah. No, it's a totally other subject. Never mind. <laughs> it's totally not treasure hunting related. So, oh boy. Okay. So, um, so okay. So I saw FOIA. I saw um, Compass Story, um, the safety one. I saw come up. Um, but if there's any others, like the map, I don't. I haven't seen that heavily discussed. But expectations right. of the finder. I saw that one come up. When they say times. Compass Story, do they mean the story that we have that? that we got oh i think mm -hmm. we should just show that in a video i think we should do a video and just show it to everybody sure. you can still get a copy if you buy one of the maps but i mean i don't think it's a problem to show it at this point and yeah. let everybody see what it is so they can see I, what it I is agree. yeah there you go in that's april. a future show, show in, in april in april All right. In april. And maybe that's like the end of a good discussion that we have. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Karen, I really like the idea of specialized knowledge because I can tell you my last solve, which was the Nez Perce solve and the Nez Perce trail in each of the battles. Um, I gave it to a searcher and she was like, gosh, that seems a lot of specialized knowledge. And I'm like, oh, and here's the thing. I don't know how to read a map. There was a tuber that um, helps with some of his uh, videos because they were really good. Here's how he, he was in the military or in the military. And he was like, here's how to read a basic map. That helped me so much. I bet you Forrest Fenn does not see, uh, in my opinion, does not see a map, reading a map as specialized knowledge. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, that's, I think, digging into what is specialized knowledge. Yeah, that's another good one. Exactly. I asked yeah. Forrest Fenn, I emailed Forrest Fenn, it's in one of my vlogs, is the New Mexico fishing regulation specialized knowledge? And he said, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, seems like he, whenever he doesn't want to answer a question, he says, I don't know. But, no, when he doesn't want to answer a question, he doesn't answer. So when he yeah, answers, that's true. <laughs> I think there's something there. I don't know what it is. So, right, right, right. Um, yeah, but Soldier Stone is both like a triangle. Yeah, I would recommend everybody to look up Soldier Stone. A lot of people think it's in Soldier Stone. Some people Stone. have searched there. Yeah, that's how it was yeah. a searcher story. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. Well, that is, I think. So if there's any more, um, Yes, I know, William. That's why my solve was so good. It was yeah. so good. Oh, and I will. I started building up a presentation that just high level, because some people said, if you spent 18 months on something, I'm not willing to go into every single bit of detail, but I'm willing to high level go through my old solve um, and just say, here's what I had, because I really don't think you can let go of a solve until you publish it. Um, and that's how I did for my first one. Um, and I'm ready to on this one. Um, my last, although um, my old search partner is now going boots on the ground out there. He is not letting it go. He got a new search partner. So I wish you luck. Follow me down. I know he is um, probably going out this year. So, um, so I will not publish that even though I have the full knowledge and actually it's a really good solve. Um, and based on some 200 footer information um, that he got, but he's posted on, on Thor. Um, and so, and so anyway, um, specialized versus basic knowledge. What is that? I think it's different to everybody. So, um, okay. I'm glad you guys like my new headset. Oh, and it's, um, what is that? What, what is call that of duty. <laughs> call of duty. Yeah. They're like, Oh, it's worth more when it's call of duty. I'm like, nah. do you have just a regular one? They're like, no, I'm like call of duty. It is. So I have a super duo. Oh, and it does mute. Okay. Let's see if it actually mutes. Can you still hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can still hear you. Oh, there's something I'm supposed to be able to <laughs> do. To probably mute a button. Got yeah, it. I'll have to figure that out later. So <laughs> okay. everybody wants me to figure out how to do that. All um, right, everybody. So sprinkled throughout this video, you like that? Sprinkled throughout this video are the cl the clues that I put out for <laughs> the Grand Adventure. Good luck, everybody that's working on it. Um, yeah, uh, there are Carlazar's coffee cups finally available <gasps> oh, oh. on Carlazar's.com. Look, oh, what I look who got. got some. Oh, and my kids are fighting over them. They're it's like, on both oh, sides, I right? Yeah, it's yeah, on yeah, yeah. So the coffee cup that I have, I centered it right in the front instead of both sides. And you have that option on the website to do either or. And there's also white cup coffee cups with different color logos. So that's there if anybody's interested on Kalazars.com. 
And uh, yeah. Coin36 is going to end on eBay in like 40 minutes. So good luck if anybody who tries to bid on that and wants to get it. Yeah, and officially my kids have decided if you drink out of these cups, because they have, they actually sing the song when they do it. Cal. Lazar's <laughs> Cal. play that song Lake. again, huh? <laughs> they, they've had fun with this. So these are, um, these are for not only coffee, but hot chocolate. There so. you go. Um, Mike, are you doing a boost on the ground this year for Forest Fen? I might have to. There's a couple areas I'd like to get to, but we'll see. I might be doing a boots on the ground to hide a treasure. You never know. But, uh, yeah, I would like to sometime this summer. I don't know when though. Um, but we'll see now that I've been boots on the ground. Sure. I want to go boots on the ground again. Cause it was a lot of fun. I just have to have the proper gear this time. That's all. Well, and someone did ask me, actually, I've gotten four or five emails. If I decide to come back in April, which is looking strong, would I still consider a late add to function in the junction? Um, oh, up by Yellowstone? Yes. And I may consider that. I'm going to talk to, um, hey, my, maybe my new search partner. I'm kidding. Um, Cynthia. Cynthia has a solid solve and uh -huh. I'm trying to get it out of her. So um, I went, I was supposed to talk to her today. I didn't connect with her. So um, you're, I'll supposed, let you know. you're supposed to say the whole thing might be over by the function in the junction. <laughs> it might be the chest might be found. Isn't that oh, what everybody says? Up on Facebook, there's a question right now. Will it be retrieved in 2019? And I have already put my two cents in and it's going to maybe make some people mad because they're like, you know my solve and how can you say that? My answer is no. Oh, let's ask the room. How many of you think it's going to be solved in 2019? The forest spent, oh, not solved because some people say they've solved it. They just haven't retrieved it. The treasure chest will be received in 2019. If you think it will be, say yes. If you think no, say no. And Karen, to answer your question, no. The only coffee cup I have available is the Kalazars one. Somebody sent me that coffee cup that was in Puzzle 4. And somebody sent me the Skull coffee cup, which is right there. There's the one the Copper Dan sent, and then there's the other one. So those are ones that people have sent me. You guys send me a coffee cup if you want to. Um, but no, I just have the Kalazars coffee cup available. If anybody wants to show support for the Grand Adventure, you could buy a coffee cup if you want to. And you still take the same one to work every day, don't you? I do, yeah. I take the Kalazars one to work every day. One of these yeah. days, I'm going to take the Skull one and scare the crap out of everybody. But I haven't done it yet, so. Oh, okay. So William for saying sure, 2019. Oh, Larry says for sure 2019, Brian. Wow. Um, Doubtful. I may not yes. go out. Nice. Ah. It's funny how everybody <laughs> thinks, you know, they have it. But. Yes. Well, and Forrest always says before you go out, make sure you have confidence or whatever that quote is. <laughs> yeah. I think we we definitely have the opposite issue. <laughs> we have a lot. If I was a betting man, and I am, I would bet it is not going to be found this year because I just haven't seen yeah. anything that shows me it's going to be found, but yeah. whoever well, finds and somebody it. Somebody asked if we could go to one of the casinos and see if they could start taking uh, a bet on it. <laughs> and if it's going to be found or not. I'm like, I don't even know yeah. how that works, but I don't think so. Yeah, no, uh, they don't do that. But I mean, what are the odds? So what odds are you going to give that it would be found this year? Because I would bet against it, but what odds do you give? You know uh, what I mean? A thousand to one. A thousand to one that it will be found this year. Huh. Yes. Well, that's interesting. Would you bet? What would you bet, Mike? Well, one, if, I, if I'm sure somebody's going to pay out, I'd put a hundred bucks on it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let me ask you another question. Yeah. Um, the finder will be from Facebook forums. Or Kalazar's vlog. YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Or Kalazar's vlog. I'd go with YouTube. One of, the, one of the 40 that are in the Grand right. Adventure. Yeah. Or, there you go. Yeah. Like, I wonder how much of an overlap. I've actually started a little bit of a study on, I think it's interesting that Reddit has the largest community of any of the communities. Mm -hmm. And I think they are siloed in the amount that they go into other groups, just like the Facebookers. When I tried to bring Facebookers over, they just could not figure out the forum software. And I'm struggling with trying to figure out Facebook. I finally got the hang of it. Um, 10 to 1, Doug? I will take that bet. My yeah. Lord. If you're saying 10 to 1, it's going to be found, yeah, I would put a lot of money on that, that it's not going to be found. Yeah, well, interesting. Okay. Right. Solved and retrieved. Yes, because so many people say that they, yeah, 100 bucks. Yeah, right. They solved it. They just can't find it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure if it'll be go. solved by 30, 19. <laughs> 50, That's 50 all odds. It'll be solved or it won't. That's pretty Yeah. Cool. Okay. But isn't there like one anomaly? Oh, or he calls it off and goes and collects it. That's like, what is it? Green and roulette? Um, right. Maybe that's. 
<laughs> I don't know. Uh, Reddit is impossible. Actually, I just stay on the one big one and I just go in every couple of days and try to see what's out there. Um, but I think they are more open with their thoughts, but they are, they definitely razz more than, um, more than most. Forrest says, it's not what you say on the forums. It's what they whisper. So I say forums. <laughs> uh, see, William, I don't know if he understands the difference. I don't know if he says forums, <laughs> All right. forums, blogs, Facebook. I think he just groups together from my, I mean, I don't have a lot of technical knowledge. I believe I have more technical knowledge than Forrest Vin. <laughs> and I say that lovingly. Um, but I don't know if he just says, but yeah, the forums. And um, I think some of the smaller forums are the ones that have some people that are really, really focused. Like Harry's Forum, they have some people that I really watch. Like I, I mean, there's not a huge amount of content there because they're such a smaller forum, but um, they're fun to watch because they know stuff and I haven't seen Yoda in forever. I hope he resurfaces. Um, but Thor, I can tell you Thor's getting five to 10 new users every week. Um, and most of them that post say I'm brand new. I just heard about this and there hasn't even been a major news article, which I think there's a few coming out in the new TV show and things. And I think that's going to re I think we've lost some, just like you said, somebody said, I'm done. I want to sell my stuff. And I think we're going to get a new, a new fresh look at it. So anyway, that's all I have. All right, everybody. That's about it. I will let you guys know how the grand adventure goes. And once the grand adventure is over, I will do a video and give the answers to all the puzzles. And uh, yeah, we'll see uh, if we're going to be on Monday with Copper Dan. That's the game plan. But uh, Copper you know how Dan. change. And maybe <laughs> we'll even give out some clues of the next coin. We'll see. We'll see. And maybe we'll we'll declare a lineup for for April. April. Yeah, there you go. That'd be cool to because have a schedule, first, right? The first Monday, I think it's April first, so we can start that first Monday. So we're only like mm -hmm. what two three weeks away. It's only two weeks away. Possibly, yeah. possibly from coming back but i'm yeah. hoping so all right everybody thanks for tuning in make sure you subscribe and hit that like button we're at like uh 2300 subscribers or something so thanks and uh yeah we'll keep making videos we hope to see you back here soon all right bye bye